So, what I've got is my pair of Honda 2000s with uh, the ability to pair them together so I can run uh, one of the air conditioners on my travel trailer if I'm you know, somewhere where they don't have electricity. Got to stay comfortable. But if you saw, they both started up a little hard because I haven't run them in a long time because I really, really do what I you know, really need them. But if you saw what just happened is this one when it started up and once it goes on to low idle, it doesn't idle well. It kind of pops and sputters and coughs and hacks and wheezes. And that one is still, you know, dead on. I may be able to just demonstrate. stored with exactly the same gas in them with stable and run a 93 octane best I can find they probably have some ethanol in it but even when you know they work they both worked perfectly when I first got them about a year and a half ago but shortly thereafter this one started acting up and I, I mean it'll run has no issues running the camper when I hook them together with that little harness but that's not what it's supposed to do it's supposed to do what that one does and uh, I've had a little bit of experience with these things to find that sometimes when something like that happens or when it doesn't start at all, there's crap in the fuel tank and it gets into the carburetor uh, or in the lines going to it, strangely, uh, because if I recall correctly, there's a pretty significant strainer in these things, which I've never removed. To fill it. You know, it takes a little while to fill these because of that strainer, but you know, even with that, this thing has managed to start acting up on me. So I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna take it apart, see what there is to see, uh, drain the fuel tank, look in it, and see if I can figure out why she's not idling properly. And if I find something, I may take that one apart preemptively at some point to uh, make sure that you know it doesn't have the same issue. Okay, so the first thing I gotta do is drain the fuel. And they're really, I got the old instruction book. And you can see that filter. It's a, you know, pretty fine mesh. It's certainly gonna catch what I would expect would be crud that would plug this up. But uh, there's no good way that I can see to do this other than pouring it out. So. This ought to be fun. Yeah, I didn't die. She's empty, and for what it's worth, the cap is only held in there by that thing. We can start trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, just since I'm doing it, um, let's check the spark plug. I've never had it out. One wouldn't think it would be dirty, but worth checking since we're here. Well, she looks barely used, which is what I would expect. A little NGK CR5 HSBR. Cute. So, we'll put that back where it goes. And that's not our problem. Now, we're going to start looking at some other things that could be affecting our idle. 
Now here's the choke that we were working with, and it worked fine. Came off choke, it just doesn't idle smooth like the other one. Now looking at all these fuel lines, it's interesting, they go into little pockets down here. This is actually a vent, comes out here. So that may be the bowl drain if I need to do that. So that's kind of nice, which I probably will. Uh, so one of these, and maybe even both of these, would be supplies. And, uh, you know, they come off the same fitting, which is down here. I don't see any serious contamination issues, although I do see a little bit of brown right here, but that may just be discoloration of the hose. I'm not sure why, but uh, next thing I want to do is take the, uh, see what the air cleaner looks like, because again, I've never, it's the first time I've ever had this apart because they probably don't have two, two run hours on them. As you can see, it's uh, pretty darn clean. It's just a foam element, doesn't smell gassy, I mean it smells like it is, but it doesn't, uh, you know, I don't see anything wrong there. I need to get a mirror so I can look up this. I think this may be a flame arrester, um, but I need to check that because who knows if that's plugged up by mud daubers. Okay, so... All of those are clean, so that's good. That's not my problem. And uh, so the intake looks good. I don't see anything wrong with that. Now I'm going to grab a couple of little tools and start to maybe get where I can pull this off because I'm expecting that this is the fuel over here because I see a couple of lines coming to the back. I'm not sure, we'll find out. So these are 8 millimeter. Coming on the other way. There we go. Factory tight. Oh, and there's another one down here, and it looks like that whole thing comes off as one piece. Ah, okay, I thought this split, but. Wow, that whole thing, that's what holds the whole carburetor on. Look at that. Okay, alright, and then we got a. Uh, not sure what that is, but. There we go. Little gasket on there. It's pretty wet. Hmm. I don't know whether that means anything or not, but there's the air cleaner off. And that's crankcase vent. Interesting. Let's take a look down there. Okay, it's clean, or clear anyway. Probably a PCB valve, to be honest. Okay, so this is the fuel vent. Now that we see that, if you can see, I'm trying to go too far, but this line here that goes up here is actually a vent. It's open, so it stays open. It is clear. There's nothing there. So this is the fuel feed right here. That's the fuel feed. I'm going to pull that gasket off. Set it aside. And... Carburetor looks a little crummy. I'm not 100% sure what this is. But uh, those over to something that's held internally right in here fuel tank itself looks very good I don't see anything in it this has apparently got a part of a fuel cutoff built into it because the fuel goes through that by the looks. So 
So I'm gonna finish popping that carburetor off and uh, drain the float bowl, pull the float bowl, see what I see. Okay, so that's drained. Doesn't look too bad. I'll snug that back up. And as you can see, let's see if I can stab myself. Just in case that's got fuel in it. It's not dumping all over my pickup truck. Okay, well that's interesting. The fuel feed line didn't have anything in it. I, didn't, I don't know whether that's normal, but it didn't. So, pull the vent out. Now, of course, <laughs> that did something. And again, maybe that's not the feed. Maybe this is the feed. So, we're about to find out. Because I think that's disconnected. Really? Well, if I burn the house down, that's why. Anyway. So. Carburetor has a little electric, what it would appear to be solenoid on the top. And that is probably the governor. Choke is out front. It works nicely. Butterfly is rather stiff. I don't know if it's supposed to be. There does not seem to be anything out of place. The Kian, huh, I'll be damned. The same carburetor that comes on, came on my dad's old Harley. The gaskets look good. Surface going into the engine looks good. Again, I don't really see anything wrong. Now I'm going to pop the fuel bowl off. That looks like a 10. And it is. Like I said, those other three for the air cleaner were eights. it in the fuel because that's what you do. Oop, oh, watch out for that little gasket. A few little pieces of crud in there but nothing major. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that, a little float, needle and seat. So now if I go get a small piece of hose I should be able to determine what these, what all these fittings do or hoses and looking at it this one goes into where the needle and seat is so yes this is the fuel supply the rest of these things 
the one that came here and went out obviously uh, that is a vent so this is actually an overflow from the fuel bowl and this is a vent for that interesting I don't know where that goes oh okay so that's what that is I hadn't noticed that that actually also went out from I uh, went out underneath so that is an overflow and a vent for the overflow for the fuel bowl just goes out the bottom so there really is only one line that matters and it is this one the rest of them are all either drains or vents I said this is turned all the way up that appears to be a mixture screw of some sort there is a little tiny tiny orifice right there I'm assuming that's an air bleed for idle so that could be something but otherwise everything looks good now I'm gonna check my needle and seat so I've just got some clear tubing As you can hear that works so I don't think that's our problem but now I'm gonna put the carburetor back together before I do that what I eventually will try to do is run the thing without the airbox on it so I can see how this servo acts there so that's all snugged up this appears to be Phillips heads because this entire thing is molded and this goes over the top of it unplug a bunch of stuff it does it does look like it is just plugs so I'm going to attempt to unplug them The big wire goes to the front panel. But for what it's worth, these are the three plugs. One, this is the one here with the rubber cover, and three. And you can see the big wire that goes to everything that appears to be a little fuel pump or a cutoff or something because this is attached here to the uh, on off switch so I'm going to pull that because this comes out of the fuel tank here and then that other one is the one that goes to the carburetor. So I'm going to pop those off and see what they look like. This is strange. There is a hose within the hose. 
I have no idea why. It doesn't go all the way down, so I guess I can take that off. Look at that. What the hell? Why is that even in there? Wow, that is another fuel filter. Uh, it's hard to see, but there are little slots in it that should prevent even any stuff that gets into the tank through that other screen from getting into here and screwing this thing up. What I'm wondering and I don't know if it matters but this is about how it was in there you know what I don't know well then again I mean it's I don't think it's possible for anybody to see in here what that does But it does stick up through there, and when it's all the way up like this, all of those slots are sticking up into the tank. So that is where it should be able to draw fuel. So that's obviously intentional. I, mean, I don't believe that's supposed to come off. Um, huh. Different, though. No. But at this point, I'm pretty much suspecting it isn't contaminated fuel. There's no way that the fuel has been gotten dirt in it or something like that that's blocking anything I wouldn't think but I'm gonna carry on because there's still something else in here that is attached to this switch and I don't know what it does but it definitely has the fuel going through it so that's screwed directly that's the thing I'm trying to do is screwed directly into this handle fuel shut off. Sure is. As of course one would expect with a Honda, this thing is well built. We have a fuel shut off. So I'm going to pull that off now and clean it. And then I'm going to put it back together without the hoses on it. Put the hoses back on afterwards. But the back side it's just some switching and things like that. There's a little fuel filter. And we're gonna just blow through everything and make sure there's no gunk. I'm doubting that this is my problem. Whoops. Because it doesn't seem to have any issues at high revs. <laughs> Definitely shuts off. Yep. Let's do this intelligently. That leak is around the hose, but... So that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. not our problem. Now hopefully I can get it back in. Still functional. But 
that goes into another thing, which is on the side of this case. Which contains, I'm not even sure, but we're going to pop, see if we can lay this over. Yeah, this is just a rubber grommet. Okay. Wow. Those are snug. strip that. Really? Huh. Okay. Screw come big long one comes from the other side. the side off. Okay, and what I need to look at is right here behind this. Mother, boy, they like those. normally have to wind these up. Wow. That saves you from wrecking your machine. Because if I tried to take that off with a standard screwdriver, I would have stripped those immediately. Some of these are really tight. And what's amazing is that's not thread locker. That's just tight. Okay. So... Here we have the back side, and I'll move the camera a little bit. You can see we've got that shutoff valve down here on the back side of the switch, all the little wiring and everything else. A bunch of vibration isolators, but then we got this thing, which has the fuel feed from the shutoff valve and then it has the feed to the engine and then it has a crankcase vent okay. and now we'll pop that off hopefully without stripping it and that's the same screw that held this on right here this off the crankcase, which goes right there. And I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> Good groove. Made by Makuni. Um, mounts like that. So I'm going to see if I can find a part number on it and look it up, because I don't know what this is supposed to do. So playing with it, this is 
an interesting piece. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but I think I know. Um, first off, it's a one-way check for the fuel. The fuel can go this way to the engine. It cannot go back. So if you blow through here, it goes. If you blow through here, you can hear the, there's a diaphragm in here that moves. This thing, though, is on the back side of the same diaphragm, I believe. And it allows you to draw through air because this is a little centered air intake, but you can't blow through it. So what I think this does is based some, somehow with a reference off of the crankcase here, it helps meter the fuel or at least ensure that the fuel gets shut off or, or controlled. It doesn't seem to have any issues. No gunk came out of it. It seems to be pretty clean. So I'm going to put this back in and start hooking everything back up because at this point I can't see anything that's going on here. So at this 
point I need to get this in place and attached. Um, I think I'm going to use a couple of little sockets to space it out so I can actually put these on there and hold it together. Then I'm going to put some gas in it and we're going to fuel it up and we're going to run it and without the cover on it so I can see what's going on and uh, see what we got. So as you can see, I got a couple of small metric sockets on that thing and they were just perfect to be able to put that on and hold it. So, got fuel in it, got the filters in it, got everything in it. I'm not sure how long this is going to take to go, but we shall see. Eco throttle is on. Could take a while. silencing it. So, that's interesting. It's definitely designed to run with the intake in place because when I went off of Eco Throttle, and even when this is wide open, uh, it's just breathing too much air and running lean. So, this and all of the filtration stuff that's there is definitely important. Um, the surging is certainly a function of how this is operating. Now, Whatever that means, I'm not sure, um, because that's all con connected to the computer control board and everything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the intake back on, and then I'm going to start it again and see what it does. And uh, potentially, since this, uh, what looks to be a mixture screw is all the way one direction, I'm going to attempt to possibly tweak that a little bit just to see if that might help the idle. is definitely I think the cause but I have no idea how to tweak it on this thing because it's completely it's completely enclosed and the little what looks to be a mixture screw only turns about an eighth of a turn because it's got a stop on it um, but it really appears to be running too lean at idle because as you could see when I close the choke 
you know, almost the entire way, it would idle properly. Um, then when I open it up, that's when it starts surging. And surging is, can be an indicator of, uh, of lean, of being lean. So, well, I didn't fix it, but I know that it's not fuel related. I know that everything's clean and um, I know it does run. It just is kind of annoying when it idles and loops like that. But as you saw, I could also it would run full power with the, with the choke like that. So I may just start running this one with the choke off. Um, if I get really rambunctious, I may pull the other one apart, not quite as bad, but take a look in it and see if I see anything different. But it does appear to be running lean. Strangely, I don't know why. Anyway, if you got any comments or suggestions on something I might check or anything you might uh, be interested in, feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. Uh, I'm always interested to know what everybody thinks, and uh, it runs. It runs fine, makes power, but uh, just uh, idles funny. So, but I know the fuel system is good, and that's uh, interesting. Anyway, hope you all have a good day.